You ever just feel like no matter how organized you get, how well you time block things, how much you plan ahead, you just don't get anything done and you find yourself stuck in this constant loop of comparison culture and being unhappy with where you're at? Well, that was me. Still me actually, but I'm getting a little better at it now. One of the things I found out that really sabotaged me was screen time, specifically mobile screen time. In this day and age, the internet is absolutely amazing. It's our double-edged sword. When you want information about anything, you can literally take this piece of metal, tap on a glass screen, and have millions of solutions in seconds. On the flip side, if you want to be entertained, you can do the same thing. Take your device, find some of your favorite apps, and boom. This is where my problem started. 10 hours of screen time. If you work a full-time job, 40 hours per week, that's eight hours per day. My daily average screen time is longer than some people's work hours. You could essentially say I'm scrolling full-time, literally. Putting this in perspective, it's no wonder I'm not accomplishing anything. So I did a seven day experiment of trying to lower my screen time and there's a few things I implemented that actually helps me keep my screen time down. Number one, Changing the alarm system. I use three options instead of my phone. Reason being for no phone, I don't want notifications to be the first thing that I respond and react to. Also, I didn't want to use a sound alarm because if it goes off before my wife's alarm, I'd wake her up. Between my options, I had the Apple Watch, the Bose Sleep Buds, and 8 Sleep Bed. All three alarm systems worked well, but the most important thing was actually making sure my phone was away from me. If I woke up with any of the alarm systems but had my phone near me, I would subconsciously pick up my phone and open it and the scrolling would begin right then and there. And this leads me to point number two, distancing my phone. During my work hours, I would make the extra effort to place my phone in a high friction place. What does that even mean? So an analogy for you, I learned this in my electronics class years ago, people move like electricity. We always take the path of least resistance. So if I leave my phone right here in front of me, how much friction is there for me to access it? Not much. Now, if I place it like this, out of sight, out of mind, right? It's a little more friction, but still really accessible. Now, if I do this, How much friction is there for me to get my phone? A ton. And this really worked for me. It helped me achieve some of my lowest mobile screen times. Number three, being consciously present. Out of all the things, this is probably the most intangible concept, but one of the most important ones. It's kind of silly because if I was consciously present and aware that I was already scrolling and spending so much time, I should just be able to put my phone down and get back to work, right? I think the main reason why I wasn't able to do this out the get-go is because I've become conditioned to fill my boredom and any free time really with scroll time. By placing my phone in a high friction place when my mind starts to wander and I think about reaching for it, my first thought is, dang, my phone's far. And then it's, what am I doing right now? Do I really need my phone? Is there anything else I need to do? And I think that right there in itself is the key to being consciously present and aware of what you're doing. Taking a step back and comparing this to school, at least during my time, and maybe even some work environments, you're not allowed to be on your phone. In work, you may have coworkers or your supervisor over your shoulder, and the last thing you'd wanna do is get caught distracting yourself. And with me being self-employed, working from home, I only got myself to be accountable, and that's definitely where the black hole of scrolling came about. So the pros of bringing screen time down. Number one for me, I'm producing a lot more content. I've always wanted to do YouTube, to create, to share ideas, to tell stories, but I'd always get stuck in my own head. I'd always start with an idea, but never really execute and bring it to fruition because consuming other people's content, I just feel like my own stuff is not good enough. But now, by spending more time doing, I've actually learned what I can produce myself and how I can do it better. Number two, I love and appreciate my relationships now more than ever. With friends, for example, I spend a lot more time listening and being present in conversation. That in turn makes me appreciate our hangouts a lot more because I'm aware of how much effort it takes to make a hangout happen in the middle of the week. Between me and my wife, I love our conversations. I love the time we spend together and it's almost like first date vibes. You know, when you're going on your first date, you've put everything away and you're trying to be really present and to show your partner that you're interested in them, that's the feeling. And number three, probably one of the most powerful feelings, 
being liberated from my phone. Being able to walk away from my phone and not worry about notifications or anything has become such a liberating feeling. I've set designated time throughout the day to actually reply to messages and emails, and I notice because I'm detached from my phone, I reply in a much more collected manner rather than a reactive manner. Whether it's a good or a bad incoming message, I'm not as reactive and I don't get as irked as before, and to me, that's a huge win. But on that same note, there are downfalls. With the world becoming more and more revolved around technology, communication moves really fast. You've got emails, texting, DMs, comments, and so many freaking different things. It's like if you don't cover all of the ground, you may miss out on something. I've definitely double booked a few hangouts here and there, and I've probably missed out on brand deals that happen straight in my DMs. It's literally a black hole in there. And sometimes, my liberated feeling comes at the expense of someone else's urgency, which absolutely sucks for them. And sometimes me. With all that said, I'm really glad I took the time to try out this experiment, and honestly, I'm gonna do my best to keep this low screen time streak going. For me personally, I think the overall increase in productivity far outweighs any of the cons this experiment produced. And if you find yourself in a similar position where you just don't feel as productive, maybe check out your screen time, and if it's on the higher side, maybe give this experiment a try and let me know what happens. That's gonna be it for this video and this experiment. Let me know in the comments below if you tried out this experiment, if it worked out for you, and also if there's anything else you wanna see in the near future too, like journaling, meditating, working out in the morning, working out in the evening, eating in a certain way. Let me know and I'll see you in the next series.